true crime, mystery, weird stories. A lot of lying, a lot of backstabbing. She was raped, molested in gangs and run prostitution rings. That she would wake up dead when she was murdered. It disgusted me. The most inhuman thing that someone can do. This is another true crime. Warning, this video includes sensitive and graphic information. Viewer discretion is advised. 911 was called sometime around 3.30. Somewhere rough there. Saying what? I don't know what you were saying. I have no idea. The, I remember when I screamed it was when I I know that she wasn't breathing. It's when I started screaming. Okay, but okay. that's where that's where, it's, where where I screamed. But you didn't call nine one one right away. Uh, of course I did call nine one one. I called nine one one when she wasn't breathing. I called nine one one right away. The suspect. You know, the, two hours or, prior to you called nine one one, you were yelling and screaming and and. Breaking things in the house. A breaking thing is, is, is and, that's, that's right. true. Uh, and you're yelling and screaming, but yet there's no female voice yelling and screaming. Do you understand what we're trying to say? Maria wasn't yelling and screaming because Maria couldn't scream. Because either A, she was passed out, or she was dead already. No, she wasn't dead, man. She was like this when I called her. So for two hours, roughly two and a half hours, what were you doing besides breaking up your apartment? I think you were breaking up the apartment because you realized two, that for two and a half hours she was dead. And you panicked. Panicked when you realized it. Started breaking shit, not knowing what to do. You took it too far. Took it too far. Okay? This is what I think. And then eventually you called 911. We want you to just explain to us why. Okay? Why? That's what we're trying to explain to you, that without the why, without the why this happened, without the explanation as to what happened, it looks like you're some cold-blooded, sadistic killer. Like, you just... I'm not. I know that. I know that. So does he. And I mean that when I say that. I know you're not a, a sadistic killer. Okay? But something sets you off. Something made you so angry that this happened, okay? Ripping out your girlfriend's insides physically and then being on the floor in the closet is not rough sex. We've gotten past that part, okay? What caused you to become so violent? Alcohol. And, and what? And what? Not just the alcohol. What else? Something else, man. I believe what I wasn't on my mind. The alcohol was over me. I, yeah, but you already told us several times you can handle your alcohol and have sex when you have alcohol. Yeah, but I told you that last night we both get really, really, really drunk. And I believe that. I believe that. But at yes. some point in time, you were up, you were in a rage, you were destroying the apartment for at least an hour and a half to two hours prior to calling the ni call 911. It's not you're like you're laying on a couch, pass out, drunk. You're up. Things are going on. So the whole that you were so drunk that you don't know what was going on is, I don't believe. It's because, you know what, you know what if you're so drunk and not knowing what's going on, you're laying on the ground sleeping. There's no, there's no explanation for me to, to, to kill my girl, man. Is there, I didn't I, okay. mean to kill her. Understand. We understand, understand that. that. I we're, we, we're not saying that you did. Did you hear what he just said? Did you hear what he just said? What? Listen. We understand that you didn't mean to kill your girl. But whatever came over you, the rage that came over you, caused you to do actions that caused her death. Unfortunately, it's an accident. It caused whatever happened to her was you had no control over. I mean, it just, you were in a rage, you were drinking, things went on. And she ended up losing her life for that. We're not saying that you intended to kill her. We're not saying that you went in there last night, went to Chili's, got some tequila, and said, you know what, tonight I'm going to kill her. I but went, one thing led to the other, and it got worse. You know, you ended up doing what you did. And you're not going to get me to believe that you guys have a very normal very tame sex life 
where the, the kinkiest or craziest thing you've done is a 69. Mm, right. And then all of a sudden, she wants you to shove a beer bottle inside of her pussy. That's what she was telling me, man. And she wants it, and she wants you to shove your fist in there, your hand in there. That's what she was telling Fidel, me. Fidel, come on, I don't believe that. Okay, I just don't believe that. Because you know what? I'm older than you. He's older than you. Mm -hmm. We're both men. Okay. As are you. These things are gradual. Okay. You take steps. Oh, we do a little bit of this. You maybe try this. Try some of this. Now, I don't like that, so we won't do that anymore. Let's try this. Let's try this. There's no way. <clears throat> before last night, had you ever put anything else inside of her besides your no. no. Your penis and what else? Maybe a couple fingers. Not even fingers. So you expect us to believe that from just your penis to a beer bottle and then your fist? No way. Fidel, listen, now you're making yourself out to sound, because it just doesn't make sense. And anyone that hears that is going to go, no way. You don't go from a penis to a beer bottle to your whole fist and up to your elbow. That just doesn't happen without some type of reason. Exactly. And that happened because you got so angry, okay? And that's what we want you to explain to us. Paint the picture for us of what happened so you look like a human being that just snapped, okay? Instead of some sadistic monster who said, you know what? Fuck this bitch, I'm just going to rip her guts out. I don't think you're that person. Either does he. But you have to explain to us so we can explain to other people. Listen, he, had no, he didn't mean to do this. He really didn't. They got into an argument. They got into a fight. And, 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 you know, with the alcohol, one thing happened, you know. But you have to explain that to us. Look okay, at um, the, the crime scene. The, the, they, they shake the... She had something with the, with the tequila caused something to her, too. The tequila? Well, yeah. it caused her to be intoxicated. Absolutely. Intoxicated and something to... Because she wasn't breathing. She wasn't breathing. I understand that. She wasn't breathing because she was bleeding. She bled out. Because of what was ripped out from her insides. That's why she wasn't breathing. I don't know, man. She go out of my hands. Out of my hands. Listen. Listen. Look at me. The only thing I'm thinking is her is dead. My kids are never gonna see them again. That's, uh, that's everything I think of right now, man. But my job, but I you was fighting for this job forever. Listen to me. Everything is going to happen right now. Listen, man. if you explain to us, give us the reason, okay, of why this happened. You're human, mm -hmm. okay? As am I. As is he. Make yourself out to be the human being that you are. By doing that, you have to give an explanation as to why this happened. Do you understand what we, that when I say that? You have to, to explain why these things happen, to explain why Marie is dead. Listen, I'd like to be able to, to stand up on your behalf and say, listen, he was extremely remorseful. He had no intentions for this to happen. Okay? He didn't mean to do this. But unfortunately, this is why it happened. He had too much to drink, and they had an, he had an argument he, he, in between that and the drinking and everything else. X, Y, and Z, whatever it may have been. But you have to explain that so we can explain it to other people. To make you... He's human. It happens. Okay? You didn't intend to kill her. Of course not. Right. So explain to us what took place that led up to it. You know. You don't want to remember. But I know you do remember. And it takes a man, a true man, to admit, okay, I 
fucked up, man. I made a mistake. I had no intention of killing her. I had no intention of doing it. But this is what happened. It takes a man to do that. It takes more of a man to admit when he's wrong. And it takes a man to cry. Be that man. Be that person. Because that's who you are. She was telling me she she got into Peru. She was she needed to go to Peru because she she was missing her mother, and you know, and I'm not gonna be able to use the car to go to work, and you know, then she was start screaming at me and all that. I get pissed and start punching the shit. I really don't remember what I. Points the shit. You just tell me, I know I get peace because of that. Then, then after that, I don't know how how we end them up in the cross or whatever. I know we made peace, but when we were doing uh, making love, she told me something that, that really don't. It just she she changed my name. She called me the the other fucking name of the other guy. And then she said it twice. And she was wrong. And she was confusing me with him. I, I didn't want to kill her. I know I killed her. That's whatever I did with her was the reason. But she was asking me about the bottle. And she was asking me about the hand too. And maybe things go a little bit far because, you know, once she, she's confusing me with the other one, and she told me to do stuff with her that I've never done before, I think that she might think that's, a, that's all the stuff that she does with the other one before. Things go out of hands. I never, you know, never mean to kill her. I don't think you did. Never mean to kill her, man. Walk us through what happened. That's what, that what happened. Then we went in the closet. As far as I remember, is you know, I, I don't remember taking nothing in my hand out of from her. Maybe I injured her, of course, I did. Did at yeah. any point she tell you it hurts? Stop? Never. That's, that's one of the stuff that never. But, okay. The, if she was telling me that I was screaming or something, somebody would hear it. So she was, me. was she passed out? No, she wasn't passed out. She was calling me the other dude name. Where was that at? Was that in, in the closet. In the closet. This is where we start, over there. Okay. Explain to us. Tell us what happened. Then, we were fucking, and she was telling me the other dude name. What name was she calling you? Uh, Norbert. Norbert? Is that her ex-husband? Yeah. Okay. So, you know... So what did you do at that point? At that point, I get mad. I get really, really mad. And I can't believe it. It's the same. It, she, when she told me about the go to Peru or whatever, it's when I start breaking the stuff. Uh, the wall and the, the, the glass and everything. And then the other point is when she, she was confusing me with him, you know, calling me him, his name. And they asked me to do stuff with her that I never done before with her. You know, it makes me feel bad, very bad. I mean, like, like you feel like he was, like you were not adequate enough, like you couldn't satisfy her. Uh, I'm asking you. No, that I'm always satisfied. With her. <coughs> she was, she was okay with me, but I don't know just what happened with her. She, she gets so drunk, and I don't know why she was confusing me and telling me Robert and besides Fidel. Uh, but I never mean to kill her, man. I really don't. I, uh, I believe you. You know, I believe you. I forgive her everything, whatever she told me, whatever she, you know. What did you What did you put inside of her besides the bottle and your fist? I don't remember to put nothing. That thing with the hair. You put the, You put that in there. Yeah. You did. Yeah, I did. Okay. What else? I don't remember to put nothing else, man. Like, like, like I'm telling you. Like, the thing that you put uh, for for the hair. Do you remember what it looks like? It, I think it's. Well, it's the only one she have, I think, is a red one or with, with, the, with the black things all around. Mm -hmm. 
Greg or Bean, I really don't, don't remember. When you put it, when you put it inside, was it plugged into the wall? No, of course not. I, I'm asking. I don't know. Of course not. Like I said, I, I didn't, I, I didn't do nothing. I mean, well, show me, show us what you were doing when you were putting it, when you put it inside of it. We're just doing like this. Just doing like this. <coughs> the bottle we die with my hands too. I'm sorry. With the bottom we die, and we, are, we are, everything just like this. Man, I, I so need to she was at her life, man. But listen, in the closet, you're doing that. You're putting the thing inside of her. She goes unconscious. No, man. She's, she's, she's she, bleeding a lot of blood. I know she was bleeding. I know she was bleeding. But she, she, she was. She, to be honest, she didn't walk to the bathroom. But she was like, okay. you know. But I know she didn't walk to the bathroom, like you no, said. She didn't walk to the bathroom, but she was like, you know, like a, like she was a, crawling. A, exactly. But she wasn't crying or nothing. She mm -hmm. was just, she was like, she couldn't stand up. I mean, well, she couldn't stand up because, because of the injuries. Plus, a little, probably a little bit of alcohol, a combination yeah, of a little bit, no, a lot of alcohol. A lot. So, the part about her saying, "I gotta throw up," that's not true. No, that is true. That is true. She went into the bathroom like that, mm -hmm. and she <coughs> told me about the phone going off to get out of the bathroom. She was talking, she was conscious. Okay. And then I went to smoke a cigarette and I go back, I see her like, like this, you wanna call 911. I really, the screams and all that, I, I <clears> know <throat> I have to, you have to be me. But if I call 911, when, when I saw her that she was like, like this. But that, gonna call the whole incident inside the closet when she's calling you by a different name and they get you very upset and you're breaking things. That, that occurs for over a period of quite a while. Oh, what? That's over a, quite a while, a, a long period of time, correct? Uh, yeah. yeah like how long, like an hour? Yeah, hour and really, half? really don't, don't remember, man. Like, I mean, it wasn't like a two minute thing, it was... From from when, when I start breaking stuff, uh, when, when I finish breaking stuff or whatever, from that time until mm -hmm. I called 911. Mm -hmm. <coughs> were, you, were you upset because of not only her calling you a name and or doing what you did, you started breaking stuff because you're just frustrated, upset, angry. Yeah, but I didn't. I never. I never hit her. I never. I know you're you know, breaking. You're in the walls and stuff like that. She's in the closet at that time. I, I don't. She. Maybe she was. Okay. She's in the closet. So she's in the closet. And you left her there to go, and you were breaking stuff? I'm asking. I don't know how. Okay, I don't, I really don't remember when I break the stuff. I mean, did you go back in the closet after breaking the stuff and and, 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 and put things inside of her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the things inside of her, she was she was telling me, all right? She was, she was telling me to do that shit. And I knew it. She first, she called me the names. And when I came man and start breaking the stuff, then when I go back, she told me to do the stuff. And then I get mad again, you know, because you took it a little uh, maybe too much, too, yeah, too man. extreme. Yeah, man. I was from very, very. Drunk I know you're frustrated. Her. You're drunk. You're frustrated. You're yeah, upset. I didn't well, mean you're to angry. kill her, man. I, know, I really don't took mean it. to kill her. We man. understand that. We understand my that. love, man. We but understand that. But she pissed you off because she called you another man's name. I can tell you right now. If I'm having sex with my wife and she calls out another man's name, I'm gonna get pissed off. Okay? It's human nature, dude. Don't, don't, don't. It. This, this is not human, man. I just took her life. I don't mean to, but I did. It. Because you got enraged. No, because I was wrong. If I was sober, maybe I understand. Maybe I just left the apartment. But I was wrong. You're not a bad person, though. You're a better person for talking about it. Absolutely. I'm not even going to be able to see her, man. Like, I guess I'm going to...
going to jail right Are you sorry for what you did? Huh? Are you sorry for what you did? If I'm sorry? Yeah. Of course, man. What do you think? What do you think? If I can go back, it's time, man. I prefer to die, man. I prefer to die first. Why were you not telling us the truth at the beginning? I'm screw it, man. I'm never, I'm never gonna see her again. I'm never gonna see my kids. And in the bathroom, the whole situation in the bathroom, is that exactly how it happened? Yeah. I put water on her face, you know, I washed my hands in the, in the sink. Mm -hmm. Did you wash anything? Did you have any other clothing on? What were you wearing? I was wearing this shirt with a black shirt. With a black shirt? Where's your black shirt? I don't know. Oh, it does. I do You took it off? I think so, yeah. You took it off before you washed your arms? Wash your hands? I don't know. You don't know. You were wearing it during the incident, though? During the time that you were having sex with her, were you wearing a shirt? Did you take it off before you called 911 no, or after I you called 911? No, I think I, I took the shirt off when, when we go to the house and we were drinking. I think so. I'm not, I'm not sure, you know. I really don't know about that. I'm just more concerned of what you, what you were wearing, what you did with the stuff after the bathroom. No, I was just, just wearing this, I guess. What was she wearing? Maria? Yeah. Maria was just, like, just, she had some clothes. Then we were going to make love to took it off. I mean, that normal. But I don't remember really exactly right now what she was she was wearing. Besides the flat iron in the bottle, there's other things in that house. What else was put inside of it? And if I tell you now, I, I, I lie because I really I remember pretty 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 much the bottle, the thing for the head in, in my hand. But I, if I use something else, I really don't don't know. I really don't know. I mean, like. This, I've been trying to recover in my mind, everything, everything, everything. I'm, I'm trying to be honest. Well, you, you're, you're being honest. You're you know, starting to be honest, but there's still some things that we need to cl clear up. I mean, I know you were scared. You're afraid of what people are going to think, afraid of what's going to happen to you I mean to before, so you, you weren't telling the truth at the beginning. Right? I was telling half and it's truth. important that you're completely honest now and, and, and honest finish now. with the truth. Okay. Because you don't want to, you don't want to start one way and then look at, you know, no, no. like a bad person. You're not a bad person, right? You made a mistake. This is something that you, you know what? You're gonna have to live with the rest of your life, okay? Mm -hmm. And you know, the, you know, the, the way to deal with that is to get it off your chest and to be honest with everything. I'm being honest, man. I'm not gonna forget. I mean, she, she was, uh, you know, a special person in your life. You guys just had a, it just, things didn't work out, you know? It's something that bothers me right now, man. I really want to ask you because I know I'm going to jail. But, like, how many times do you think it's going to be this? What do you want to ask her? I don't know, to who? What did you say? You want to ask her something? No, to you. Oh. Like, I know I'm going to jail. Mm -hmm. I have two keys and... You know, and everything. How many years do you think this is gonna cost me? I don't know. I can't tell you that. I, I have no idea. What I can tell you is that if you're honest and you're you you are truthful about everything that happened that night, that it will that it is gonna help you. Okay? Because you're gonna make make yourself out to be a better person than what is portrayed in that scene. Okay? Like I said. Anybody that walks into that scene and sees all this blood and 
what, what, ha what was going on here, if they have no reason or explanation for why, why it was done, I mean, look, if you, you know, she did things and messed with your mind that caused you to snap, you know? I didn't, I didn't want to kill her, man. I didn't try to kill her. I just, I it just, just played a role. It just happened. When she, did she crawl out of the closet or did you burn her, help her get out of the closet? No, 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 she just went like this, to the bathroom. To the bathroom, to the bathroom. Before you said that you, you put your um, hand inside her in the bathroom. In the bathroom. You did it again inside there? Uh-huh. Okay. Anything else inside of her in the bathroom? No, man. Just, just I don't drunk. know if I, if I bring the bottle and the thing with me or if I use it in the closet. I know I use it, but... Mm -hmm. You know, I don't remember if it was nothing else. Uh, I don't, you know. What do you think about all, what did you think about all the blood? What was going through your mind? So scared, man. Scared. Very scared. You know, they kept going around and round with Fidel, and I meant just for hours and hours. Lopez did horrific things to end Maria's life that night. He wouldn't answer the one major question, though. This is a warning that I will be getting into graphic details. The one question that he would not answer was, how did Maria's intestines end up ripped out of her body? And Lopez kept telling the investigation team half-truths. He stated he blacked out and did not remember. He only remembers getting really drunk. And supposedly Maria was really, really drunk. The worst drunk he has ever seen her. And that's when he stated that by Maria's request, he started sticking objects into Maria, like a beer bottle and his fist during rough sex. He kept practically calling it rough sex. Lopez states it started in the walk-in closet and ended up in the bathroom. During, he stated that she was enjoying it and just lying out his ass like, this man is so disgusting and a horrible monster. But during intercourse, Maria allegedly called out her ex-husband's name twice, which made Lopez upset and, by his own words, was enraged. He then left her passed out in the closet. Lopez began smashing things around the apartment and punching holes in the walls. But then after his outburst, he returned to the closet where Maria was still unconscious and proceeded to insert several foreign objects into her vagina and anus, including a beer bottle, a hair straightener, and both his fist and arms up to his elbows, y'all. Elbows! Making Maria bleed a lot. I will be putting in crime scene photos throughout this video, and it was at this point that he balled his fist up and proceeded to pull Maria's insides out. Then Lopez said he washed his hands and went outside for a cigarette. He then tried cleaning up the scene a little bit before calling 911. 911 received a call at 3.39 a.m. on that Sunday morning in 2015. She's not breathing, he told the dispatcher. She's gonna die, man. Come on, someone help her. He told investigators he tried splashing water on Maria's face trying to wake her up and her breathing was very labored. Arriving at the apartment, police said they found the glass and a sliding glass door smashed, holes punched in the walls, and half-empty bottle of 1,800 tequila and cut limes in the kitchen. They found him crying for help next to her naked body in the bathroom. By this time, Maria was already deceased. They pronounced her dead at 4.02 a.m. The medical examiner concluded the reason of death was due to blood loss. Police also found pieces of Maria's intestines in small bags that were placed in the main trash can located in the kitchen. 
Police interrogation video showed investigators probing him to tell the full story. After they found a bloody scene at the apartment, he told detectives, She changed my name. She called me the name of the other fucking guy. And she said it twice. And she was wrong. And she was confusing me with him. I will be inserting that video here. Get some sleep. A little bit. All right, good. Did you eat? Did you eat? No. I'm still hungry. All right, so we have some things we need to uh, clear up. Okay. Um, we just had crime scene go over to the uh, finish up the scene, and I got some things I want to show you because she called her ex-husband's name. Huh? Because she called you her by her your, by her ex-husband's name. Yeah, man, my my mind blocked stuff. I need to, my mind just blocked everything I was doing. I didn't think it just just straight up and right. That's why I take it to the bathroom and start putting water on her face and call nine one one, man. How long was it till you called nine one one? I put it in the bathroom and then put water on her face and see like she gonna breathe. I put, call nine one one. I'm not really sure how long. You had cleaned yourself up first? Um, I cleaned myself in the bathroom. Before you brought her in there? Or after? Uh, after, 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 because uh, I know I smoked a cigarette. I smoked a cigarette, man. I was so fucking nervous, man. Man, I didn't. I wasn't thinking, man. I wasn't thinking. No, I don't. I don't. You know, I don't touch the face. The face, I touch it. Like, baby, baby, to wake up. Yeah. But to just pour water. Did they call their family already? I think so. No. The residents of a faded, Opkalaka apartment building say they remember the brief, disruptive stay of tenant Fidel Lopez. He didn't know how to behave, said Suarez, other young man who for three months lived in unit number six with a woman and two young children before he was evicted, following a May 2014 arrest for disorderly intoxication. Suarez, 33, said Lopez seemed rough. He wasn't one to follow the rules, parking where he pleased, and blaring music late at night. He didn't make friends with anybody, she said. Still, Suarez said she was surprised to see her former neighbor's picture on television and to learn of the allegations. This was his previous apartment with his ex-living girlfriend, by the way. I don't want to believe such ugliness is possible, said Rodriguez, 67, who said Lopez... His twin brother George and their parents lived in the Hiley apartment above her about three years ago. Fidel Lopez was kind, outgoing, helpful, and ambitious, said Rodriguez. He had a job, took academic courses, and regularly volunteered to help her husband, who uses a wheelchair. He was a special guy, a very good man, said Valdez, 77. In Fort Myers, Yvette who identified herself as Lopez's aunt, said she never saw signs that her nephew could be violent. He's not like that, she said. He's a very nice boy. I don't know what happened. Sorry, I'm being very sarcastic, as you can tell. What people had to say about Maria. We feel it here in the community, she said. Some of us have been going to the leasing office to offer our condolences. Maria is someone that had been with them for a long time. She was very gentle, very private, soft-spoken young lady. We all loved her. I still cannot, I cannot process it, Cortez told the Sun Sentinel. Lizette, meaning Maria, was very responsible. It's very hard to understand why she got involved with a person who has these kinds of thoughts. We're all trying to cope with this. I don't even know how someone could confess to something like that, she said. Now, this happened in 2015. 
the conclusion of this is three years later on, on January 17, 2018, Fidel Lopez took a plea deal and got sentenced to life in prison without parole for the murder of Maria. He wanted to avoid the death sentence because the state, they were all going for the death sentence. Many people showed up, including many of her family members. He's confessed to disemboweling his girlfriend after she screamed her ex-husband's name during sex has now learned his fate. Local 10 News reporter Erica Rico is live in Fort Lauderdale with details on this one. Christy, before even coming here today, Fidel Lopez knew he'd be spending the rest of his life in prison. It was just a few weeks ago he accepted a plea deal, pleading guilty to that murder in exchange for uh, to avoid facing the death penalty. Twenty-six-year-old Fidel Lopez took the stand at his own sentencing this morning, asking the dozens of family members and friends of his former girlfriend Maria Nemeth for forgiveness. Lopez pled guilty to first-degree murder and sexual battery for the brutal killing of Nemeth in their Sunrise apartment in September of 2015. Police say he murdered her after she said her ex-husband's name twice while they were having sex and then mutilated her body. After the killing, Lopez called 911 himself, sobbing. Lopez's mother says she was with her son and Maria hours before it happened, and they were happy and in love. He had no criminal record. His sister told the court today she blames the brutal attack on drugs. The victim's uncle read a letter on behalf of her loved ones, saying only God would determine Lopez's ultimate fate. The judge took the state's recommendation, sentencing him to life in prison, and says she was left speechless with this case. I gotta be honest, um, in my almost 23 years on this bench, I've never been left without words to say. And there is no chance for Lopez to ever get out of prison. No parole, no opportunity to appeal this sentence that was given to him today. He will now be sent to a maximum security prison for the rest of his life. Her father read his impact statement to the court and to Lopez. It stated, If I had to summarize the life of Maria, it would be very difficult to express it in a few lines, he said through a translator. I just want to tell you all that she was and will continue to be a model of affection, effort, perseverance, and love of humanity. Also, during court proceedings, Fidel Lopez also read an apology to the family, and it stated this. Today, I'm happy to fulfill this conviction. I know what I did has to be paid for, and I agree. I pay with my life for the life I took, he said. To Maria's family, I ask for forgiveness. My thoughts, my opinions, my synopsis. They were together for a year. They moved in. They were only moved in together for one week. And because this asshole, disgusting man was such a narcissistic piece of crap, was so jealous that he wanted control. And due to her being so drunk, I'm sure she did not mean to scream out her ex-husband's name. It was just a mistake. She didn't know what, what was going on, you know? Supposedly she was so drunk and he got enraged. He lost it. He snapped. He completely destroyed the apartment. But this is what I think. In the picture, you can see that there's blood everywhere throughout the apartment. He snapped. And to be honest, I feel like he hurt her before he damaged the apartment. I think he damaged the apartment because he was so angry that he killed her and he was freaking out. And there was some time that he actually cleaned up stuff and then called 911. That's just my opinion. But I wonder what you think happened. My thoughts were Maria was a very sweet and happy person. She came to America for the American dream, but instead meant a real monster. She still had a full life to live. She meant so much to so many people. This case really got to me. I have cried so much while trying to research it. There were times where it was making me feel sick to my stomach, but this was so horrific, y'all, that I just, like, I've got to tell the world about this. I've got to get it out. I really hope that this beautiful young lady is never forgotten. 
and she is at peace, please keep her family in your prayers for love and happiness. My heart just aches for her family, her mom, her dad. That's just devastating. Me as a parent, I would be so outraged. Oh, I would be outraged. I do want to read something that I wrote down. And it kind of runs a little bit more deep with me because I've been through mental and physical domestic violence. Domestic abuse is real. It can come in all forms. Belittling, narcissism, making you feel like everything is your fault. Mean words, putting you down, taking away your self-worth, controlling. Isolation from friends and family, not supporting your dreams. Making you feel dumb for being happy. Making you feel like you're going crazy. A one-sided relationship. Mental and physical abuse. If any of you have these signs in your relationship, please cut ties with this toxic person. You deserve so much better. There are many places that will help. I will put links in the description. These abusers will apologize and beg for more chances, but the truth is they will never change. A cop once told me when she came out to one of the issues, she said, if you do not get away from this person, it won't be a bloody nose. It'll be us showing up to you being dead. And that really stuck with me. That really made me realize I've got to fight for myself. And until you are actually in this type of situation, I don't want to hear anything negative in the comments. I don't want to hear the, oh, well, why didn't she just leave? It's not as easy as you think. So please seek help if you are one of these people that is enduring a bad relationship. If there are any cases you want me to look into or dig in for more info, let me know. My email is down below. You can comment down below. I love y'all very much. Please go and subscribe. Like this video. Go over to my new channel that I am posting all the true crime at, Lady Curious. So please, go make your way over there because eventually I will stop posting my true crime, mystery, weird stories on my main channel. Please stay safe. Until next time.